what tonight? Chris, night diving is exactly the same as day diving except it's dark. So we take flashlights. The most important thing about the flashlight is you never shine it in anyone's eyes. Try to be very careful, be very specific and deliberate where you shine your light. Please don't shine it in anyone's eyes. We'll get group number one in, then group number two. We'll drop down here under the boat. We'll swim up to where the stone circle is. All the divers, all the snorks from all the boats are gonna congregate at that area. Hopefully the lights will attract plankton, which is what manta rays like to eat. Mantas need to eat 10 to 12% of their body weight every week in plankton. Baby manta rays are about six feet across. The adult females are about 12 feet across. They weigh maybe a thousand pounds. They need a lot of food. So hopefully we're gonna get a lot of plankton over there at the lights and the mantas will come and feed. In 1993, all the local dive shops got together and we wrote the guidelines for the manta ray night dive, the, the community standard. And rule number one, over there at the lights, we want the divers literally sitting or kneeling on the bottom and we want the snorkelers to stay on the surface. We've got 32 feet of water in which the manta rays can swim in. The largest we've, number of mantas we've ever had on a night dive was 42 manta rays. We had 13 Monday night. If you've got 13 12 foot, 1,000 pound animals swimming around, they need a lot of room. So divers, please sit or kneel on the bottom. Snorkelers stay on the surface. Before you sit or kneel on the bottom, it is a very good idea to shine your light on the bottom. Make sure you don't sit or kneel on anything with fangs or spines. There are some sea urchins down there. Don't sit on them. Find a nice spot and sit on the bottom. Rule two is sit with your group, the yellow group or the green group, and shine your lights up. And by shining our lights up, hopefully we're gonna attract a lot of plankton, and then the mantas will come and swim back and forth through our lights, feeding on the plankton. If we do this properly, it looks like this. This is our Hawaiian PowerPoint display. Ooh. See that? Oh. Did we have this last time, Summer, the PowerPoint? Okay, so see the divers are sitting down here and they're shining their lights up and the man rays are swimming back and forth through the divers' lights feeding on the plankton. So divers sit on the bottom, snorkelers stay on the surface. We like to have the snorkelers lay horizontal on the surface. Don't dangle your legs, lay horizontal, shine the lights down and their lights will also attract plankton. And then the mantas come up and do somersaults right underneath the snorkelers as they feed like this. If you do it properly, it looks like this. I'm kidding, it's the same slide. <laughs> Fooled you. But hopefully we're gonna get a lot of plankton. We rank the plankton on a scale of zero to five, and zero is crystal clear water, no food at all. When it's a five, you can't see your hand in front of your face. There's so much biomass in the water. Hopefully we're gonna get a lot of food tonight. When the mantas are feeding, they open their mouth. The mouth is two or three feet wide. Manta rays have cephalic fins that hang down on either side of their face. The cephalic fins, act like a funnel to force large amounts of water into the manta ray's mouth. The water goes into the manta's mouth, the water goes out through their gills, and their branchial filters trap the plankton. Rule three is please try not to blow bubbles into the manta ray's face. The little baby manta rays are very shy. If you let loose with a lung full of air in their face, it can spook them and frighten them away. We want to do everything we can to encourage manta rays to, to let people approach them and to approach people. So try not to blow bubbles into the manta ray's face. Of course, you never hold your breath scuba diving. So if you see a manta swimming towards you, please try to inhale until after the manta ray's passed over your head or else exhale before it gets there. But try not to go right in that manta ray's face because it could scare them and we don't want to do that. So rule three, please try not to blow bubbles in the manta's face. Rule four is the most important thing, and that is do not touch the manta ray. Please do not touch the manta ray. The manta rays have a protective coating of mucus on their body, and it protects them from skin infections and parasites and things like that. We dive about 30,000 people per year in Kona with manta rays. And if everyone touches the manta rays, we're gonna destroy the resource. So please don't touch, tease, or pet the manta ray. Do be aware that when you're shining your light up like this, you may get a lot of plankton right in front of your light. And the mantas will literally swim right up to you, open their mouth, scoop the plankton, and they will rub right up on top of your head. And it's pretty awesome when a thousand pound wild animal comes up and pets you, and they will do that. With that in mind, you may want to remove your snorkel. 
I've seen it happen plenty of times in 27 years, where a manta ray has come up, but not even touched the diver, but gotten tangled in the snorkel. And it'll yank the mask and snorkel off your head like that fast. So you might want to remove your snorkel. So let the manta rays touch you, but there's no touching them. Sort of like a strip club. Anyway, <laughs> so don't touch the manta rays. Um, some nights the plankton is really, really thick. Last night they said it was a three to four. And when it's really thick like that, you can feel the plankton squirming around on your face and wiggling in your ears and stuff. Any of you guys ever see that old Star Trek movie, The Wrath of Khan? You remember when they captured Chekhov and they put that creature in his ear? Don't think about that tonight, okay? <laughs> but hopefully we'll get a lot of plankton and a lot of good mandrays. All the mantas have a unique set of spots between their gills. It's like their fingerprint. There's 201 mantras we've identified in the last 20 years using the spots to tell them apart. Uh, keep your eyes open when you look at them tonight. See if you notice what the spots look like. The one we saw this afternoon, Koei, her left cephalic fin got a fishing line wrapped around it about 12 years ago or so. We cut the fishing line off, but the wing was so badly damaged, eventually her right cephalic fin fell off. So her her right one's fine, her left one is completely absent. Rule five is also very, very important. That is please stay with your group. Stay with your group. Summer, stay with your group. What could be cooler than that, Kelly? What's cooler than that? You can take a really big thing, right? Like Thank <laughs> you.